Hey guys, this is Aaron from Geek Academy Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials where in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a tab bar application within the Swift language. Now in a simulator here, an example of what we're going to create in today it's a simple tab bar application here. We have three tabs and we have a few features that we're going to be integrating from within it. The first thing you may see, this is our first view controller and we have our three tabs at the bottom. Now the tabs are different colors from what is basically given in the standard blue. So we're going to show you how to customize the tab colors and select from different ones. We're also going to be showing you how to jump tabs from not just using the tab buttons at the bottom, but from buttons from within the view itself. So we've got our buttons tab two and tab three, we can click it and it'll take us to tab two and then finally tab three. And then how to navigate away from our tab view controller here, our button, which is basically embedded within a navigation controller, which you can take us to an additional screen that is not within the three tabs, and then bring us back. So we're going to create into that today. So I've already got my project set up. It is a simple uh, tab bar application for the iPhone, and I've simply named it Swift Tabbed App for the purpose of this tutorial. Now you would notice this is not a single view application, like I said before, it's a tabbed bar application. And just to show you, if I go into main.storyboard, by creating one of these, we are already generated um, a simple layout or the basis of a tab bar application. So what I'm gonna do first then is highlight our tab bar controller here and just simply change this to an iPhone four inch. Just so it's small enough that we can see it with all in one screen. Now what this tab bar controller does, and it's linked to these two views as you can see, is basically the starting point to the application. It loads into this tab bar controller, and as this first view is linked up to our first tab here, it will display this view. Now the only way to get to our second view is by clicking the tab, uh, the second tab at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is go on to add a third one in. So we're gonna drag and drop a view controller in, and what I'm gonna do, simply select it, our tab bar controller over there, Right click and drag it over and select the relationship segue to view controllers. So by doing that, it creates us a connection and it also, if I just quickly zoom in, creates us a new tab at the bottom with the possibility to add an image in. So as you can see now, we all got set up here. And what we're gonna do is go to add an image in. So within our images.x.cassettes there, we have our first and second images. If I right click it and go to show in finder, it's our image here is a PDF file. Now the reason it's a PDF file is because you can basically almost, almost resize these to any image size and the kind of color quality will stay the same in terms of not images, but in terms of like kind of vector shapes and stuff like that. So we're gonna go on to create a third one for our third tab. So I'm gonna quickly right click this and open it within Photoshop. Now that we've got it set up here, I'm gonna simply expand it. I'm gonna hide that layer so it's blank. And I'm going to create and add in a image of my own. So I'm gonna select something random and I'll just change that color to also black. And I'm gonna drag that image in. I'm gonna make sure that it touches all the sides there. So I'm gonna space it out. There we go. So we have our image. So what we're gonna do is save. We're going to go to save as, and then we're going to change it from our Photoshop to simply our Photoshop PDF file. And we're going to name this one third, and then we're going to save it simply to our desktop. I'm just going to go to save it as PDF, and yes. And then it's all done. It should be on our um, desktop momentarily. And there it is, as you can see there, our PDF's in. So we'll bring our project back up. And what we're going to do is simply select it, and then drag and drop it in uh, underneath our first and second there as our third. So let me select our second there. You can see it's selected as all as a universal image. If you go to our um, settings here, you can see devices universal. So within our third here, we need to select on it and change it from bitmaps to vectors. And let's quickly drag it up into our all there. There we go. And that should get rid of our error at the top there. So it's universal, it can be used for anything now. So if we go to our main.storyboard, and go over to our new tab we've added in, in the attribute inspector. We'll change the image here to simply third, and now it's simply added in. And I'll change the title of our um, tab there to also third, and it's added in. 
So now this image can resize on all of our devices in terms of like low retina screens to retina HD screens on the new iPhones, even up to iPads, and it will remain the same quality and it won't change. Okay, so we've added that in then, now we're gonna configure something else. Right, so our second, well our third view that we've added in now, we're gonna embed this within a navigation controller. So if you simply highlight it and go up to editor and go to embed within, and select navigation controller. You can see now, very much like how our normal free views are embedded within our tab bar controller, our third one is now embedded within the navigation controller. So what this means it does, it gives us a navigation bar at the top. Now the reason we want that is because we can add in a fourth view, which is not going to be linked to um, the tab bar itself. It can only be accessed by going through and pressing a button within on the third view. So if I scroll down to our button here, I'm going to simply drag and drop it in. And then what I'm going to do is simply add in some missing constraints so it resizes. And then space over, right click or control click and drag over to our new view and select it as an action segue to show. This will also resize our view here and just get rid of this error as there was no way to get to it. That fixes that. And now once we go to our third view and press that button, because it's embedded within a navigation controller, it will push to our new fourth view and it will have a nice little back button on top of the navigation bar which can bring us back. And this is just to simply show you how you can navigate away from the tab bars to have extra content hidden within the applications, giving your users a feeling like they're diving deep into your application and there's more content to be discovered. So if you went to Build and Run and just quickly test this out. You can see once it's all set up here, we have our second one, our first one, and we also have our third one of our new image already in. And it's got our navigation bar at the top. When we hit our button, it takes us to our new fourth view with our back button, and we can simply hit that and go back. And even though we're in this fourth view and our third tab, we can always go back to our second one, then go back to our third, and it's still in that fourth view, so we can simply go back. So it kind of leaves where you left off, basically. Right, now we've done that then, we're gonna now configure to be able to jump tabs, not just using the tab buttons at the bottom. So I'm gonna place this on our first view, like we did in the example. So I'm gonna add this in and space it out. Simply copy and paste it. There we go. So this first one here, I'll simply change it to tab two. And this one to tab three as we're already on the first tab, so we can't jump to our first tab already being on it. So that's, this one will jump us to our second tab and this one will jump us to our third tab. What I'm gonna do is bring up the assistant editor and make sure we select in our first control, um, view controller there and drag and drop these over into the action, um, action section and select it as an action and I'll simply name this jump tab two. And the same goes for our third one. Again, name this jump tab free. Select as an action and connect that up. So once we've done that, we can close our assistant editor and go back to our standard editor. They all have actions now. Uh, we need to simply add in some missing constraints so it resizes for all different views and then jump into our first view controller dot swift. Okay, so now we've been here, we're going to basically set up it to enable us to jump to our kind of other tabs. And it's quite a simple process to do. All we simply need to do is get our tab bar controller uh, with question mark there to so simply then dot selected um, index and we simply want to equal it to the tab we want to go to. Now as we have three tabs you would think we would put in number two to jump to tab two but it does not work like that. Tab one, the index of tab one is basically zero. The index of tab two is one and the index of tab three is two. A little bit confusing, but just that's how it kind of works. It always starts at zero. So to jump to tab two, we want to jump to basically the index one. And if I copy and paste that, and place it within our third button here, and again, we want this to jump to tab three, so we select index two. If you was on, say, let's say tab two or tab three, you want to jump to tab one, you would select the index as zero to jump to tab one. A little bit confusing, but kind of easy to understand there. So if we go to test that out, see now we've got our tab two. We selected on tab, the first tab, remember? So we select tab two, 
jumps us to tab two. We can go back and select tab three, we jump us to tab three. So as you can see already here, we've added these actions within our first view control dot swift as that's what's linked up to our um, view control, our first view controller tab within our interface. We have our second one here, which generated because we have a second view, but now we have a third and fourth one implemented just here within our view, which don't have any classes. So to show you how to add a new set of classes to our new um, tab control view controllers, we simply need to right click our project and go to new file. Simply select Coco Touch class, and in the subclass here, we need to change it to a um, UI view controller. Make sure you select it on that. And as our first view controller and second view controller are named how that is, we can do it quite similar to third view controller and add that in. Create that into our project. And I'm just going to simply drag and drop it underneath our second view controller there. So we've added that in. So if we jump into our main.storyboard, select our third tab controller or view controller here, select it, go to the identity inspector and simply type out in the class third view controller and add that in. It's now linked up so we can now create actions and outlets for this as we have a class referenced for it. If you don't want to go on to create a class for our full form that we added in, which is not linked to the tab bar whatsoever, um, we simply repeat the process and again go to Files Inspector and go to the Identity Inspector and add that in manually. That's simply how you would do that. The final thing we're going to do now is change the colors of the tabs. At the moment they are blue and there's no possible way to change them overall within the interface, so we have to do this manually with code. So how we do this then is universally within the app delegate. So go to addelegate.swift and we need to add this within the did finishing with launch options. Now the reason we do this is uh, once it's basically like the view did load of the app delegate. Everything within this little section here gets performed when the application loads up. So how we do this then is we create our let here. So we do let and I simply name it color. Now the color we're going to add is going to equal UI color and we do two parentheses here. Now we're going to create our own RGB color kind of scheme with its own alpha so it's not linked to a set red color or blue color. We can customize it however we like. So if you put in red there and you get all the green, the blue and the alpha come up. So we're going to have this equal to 0 forward slash 255.0. There we go. And I'll just simply copy and paste this. Ooh into each of these sections and then we're going to customize it the color itself and we set the alpha here to dot uh, 1.0 let's get rid of that extra um, bracket on the end we don't need that okay and so from within here if you're not sure what color you want if you had photoshop open if i jump back into it go to our color scheme here uh, for example if i wanted the color to be bright green you can see the r uh, g b at the bottom here so if i go to let's say I want a deeper, darker green. You can see that it's the um, red, the R here, needs to be zero. The green needs to be 186, and the blue needs to be nine. So if I just place that just to the side of my screen there so I can still see it as I'm typing. So the red stays zero, the green here is a uh, 186, and then the blue that I would like is a little bit of nine on there, and the alpha stays at one as we want that to be 100% transparency. And then we get our UI tab bar as we've now created that color. We need to add it to our tab bar. UI tab bar uh, dot appearance. Oh, make sure we got that capitalized there. So UI tab bar dot appearance uh, dot tint color to then equal the name of our letter there, which we called it color. There we go. So if I just simply close down this little color section here. And if I go to build and run now, you can see that the tab bars are now changed to that green that we've just added in. So you can see once it's loaded up now, that green we selected within the Photoshop uh, with the RBG color is now displayed on top of our tab. So that's simply how you add the custom color in. And it, it's brilliant because you can now theme the tab bars to your application. So this can't be done in the interface, unfortunately. Uh, it can only be done as an overall appearance change. So there you go, that's simply how you create the basis of a tab bar application within the Swift language. So I hope this helps in your apps or projects at the moment. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time. 
Hey guys, just before we click off this video, I have a few more bits of information that I'd love to share with you. But just before I do, if this tutorial helped you in any way, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't, make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links will be in the description below. If you want more up to date and in depth tutorials on iOS 8, Xcode 6, and the Swift language, then make sure you guys enroll in our complete iOS 8 and Xcode 6 course. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys want to learn on the go, make sure you download our Xcode tutorial application from the App Store where you can get much more than what we offer on YouTube. Again, links for this will be in the description below. And if you guys want to kick back and blow off a bit of steam, make sure you go check out my gaming channel where we have a lot of fun, play with a lot of friends and generally just have a good time. So make sure again you go subscribe to that channel. But once more, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.